Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to view this presentation on vocational rehabilitation. We believe that the adoption of these core competencies into practice will improve the outcomes for children with behavioral health needs and their families. These foundational modules are developed to be viewed by family members, higher education students, paraprofessionals, and professionals. A list of resources and references have also been provided. This module will be presented by Tina Greco, the Transition Coordinator with the New Hampshire Department of Education. The New Hampshire Children's Behavioral Health Workforce Development Network is to build a sustainable infrastructure for the professional development of the children's behavioral health workforce based upon the core competencies and infused with the system of care core values and guiding principles. The need is for New Hampshire to have an adequate workforce and an infrastructure to support those who work with children, youth, and families. The New Hampshire Children's Behavioral Health Core Competencies were developed in 2011 by a representation of diverse stakeholder groups, including child-serving community mental health providers, family organizations, state policymakers, and university staff. The goal was that the competencies would be the first step in developing systematic and comprehensive human services development infrastructure. The competencies were developed using the system of care core values and principles as the foundation. There are seven domains, family-driven and youth-guided practice, cultural and linguistic competence, childhood development and disorders, screening assessment and referral, treatment planning, interventions and service delivery, systems knowledge and collaboration, and quality improvement. The competencies are organized for professional staff by levels of knowledge and skills in each domain. There are three levels, foundational, intermediary, and advanced. The levels are designed to identify the skill level of practitioners. They are fluid and not specifically tied to certain formal education and training or position titles. A copy of the report can be accessed and a link is provided at the end of this presentation. This is one of a series of modules designed to support the development of core competencies in the children's behavioral health workforce. This module gives a brief overview of New Hampshire vocational rehabilitation. Viewers will learn about eligibility requirements, elements of the vocational rehabilitation process, and potential activities and or services that may be provided to transition-aged students. Vocational Rehabilitation 101. VR is an eligibility-based program. Eligibility is based upon three criteria. One, the individual must have a documented disability. Two, the disability must be a barrier to them either attaining or maintaining employment on their own. And three, it can be demonstrated that VR support is necessary to attain or maintain employment. In the case of a student, they can be referred to VR two years prior to graduation or exit. What this means is if a student is on track to graduate at age 18, they can be referred to VR at age 16. And if they are staying in school until 21, they can be referred to VR at age 19. VR 101 continued. VR counselors will work th with the student, their family or guardian, and transition team to help to identify and explore what they would like to do for employment or education and training after high school. All VR services that are provided to a student are individualized and must be linked to their employment goal. It's important to note here that when talking about individualized services through VR, that these are based upon the student's interests, their needs, and impact of disability. Because of this, one set of services or activities may be provided to one student, but that will continue to look different from student to student. And anything that VR provides must be linked to the employment goal. As the student gets closer to graduation or exit from high school, their VR counselor will work with them towards securing a job or entering into further education or training. 
Here are some examples of some key VR services that can be provided. Vocational guidance and counseling, career exploration, job seeking and keeping skills, specific job training, job placement, job analysis, rehabilitation technology, accommodations and or modifications, and technical assistance regarding impact of disability related to a specific job. It's important to note here a couple of different things. When talking about vocational guidance and counseling as well as career exploration, it's important to ask the question of your school, what do you provide for transition services and activities as well as activity related to employment. The important thing here is that there is collaboration amongst the school, vocational rehabilitation, and other partners on a student transition team. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to share services and activities versus duplicating services and activities for a student. Another important thing to note is job analysis. Job analysis is the activity that, one, one, we want to make sure that the job that a student is going to be placed in is best suited for them. Do they have the skills, do they have the ability to do the job? And then when we're talking about rehabilitation technology, accommodation, or modification, it's important to note that if any of these things are needed for a student to participate in their school work or the school day, that this will be provided by the school district. However, if there is technology, accommodation, or modification that's needed for a student to do their job, then that is something that vocational rehabilitation will potentially provide. Here are some other example services that do not require financial need evaluation. When referring to financial need evaluation, this is a document that the VR counselor will complete with the student and or their family to assess whether or not there can be monetary contribution towards the cost of certain services or activities to be provided by VR. In this certain instance, these are services that are not subject to financial need. These are career guidance and counseling, information on employment trends, job seeking and keeping skills, on-the-job training, advocacy, information, and referral to other community services, as well as participation in a student's transition process. Here are some example services that VR may potentially provide that are subject to financial need. These include adaptive equipment, college or coursework, employment training, uniforms, tools, driver's assessment or education, and transportation. Again, it's important to note that any services that vocational rehabilitation provides to a student must be connected to their employment goal. It's also important to note that VR services are not intended to be long-term, but instead short-term. It's really all about relationship when we're talking about transition planning and planning for life after high school as it relates to employment, as it relates to post-secondary education, as it relates to the overall goals, goals of the student once they graduate from high school. So a key part of that team certainly is the student. And they're going to be meeting throughout the school year with their VR counselor. What this typically means is that the VR counselor is often at a school once a month. So it will be important for the student to the best of their ability to maintain their appointments with their VR counselor, to participate and follow through on activities that their VR counselor may ask of them, as well as work to ensure that they're taking ownership of their planning for life after high school. Another important, important member of the transition team is the family. And often, family engagement can be a measure of student success. It's also important that family members are educated on the available services for their son or daughter and that shift from entitlement through special education to eligibility 
for adult services like vocational rehabilitation. And then there's the overall transition team. Often they possess a lot more knowledge and information about the student than is realized, and it's important to recognize the need that we all bring something to the table and must work together to help the student to achieve their goals. So where are we located in New Hampshire? Vocational Rehabilitation has seven offices throughout the state. We're located in Berlin. We have two offices in Concord, one administrative office, and then the other is our local office, followed by offices in Keene, Lebanon, Manchester, Nashua, and Portsmouth. We also have services in each of our offices that assist individuals who are either blind or visually impaired, as well as deaf and hard of hearing. So if you're interested in VR services, what are your next steps? Well, the first next step is to make a referral. It's important to know that anybody can make a referral for VR services. That can be the student, their family, it can be a staff person from a school, a medical professional, anybody can make that referral. So with the website links included, you can call your local VR offices, office to make a referral for yourself, as well as be able to determine who your VR counselor is based upon the school that you attend. Once you've been referred to VR services, the next step that will, will occur is that the VR counselor will seek to schedule an intake with the student. This meeting can take place either at the local VR office or at the high school. This meeting typically takes place within one month of having been referred for VR services. Once somebody has been referred to VR services, has met their VR counselor for an intake, the next step is to, to determine eligibility for services. This is done by way of signing a release, either the student or their family, the student if they're their own guardian, by signing a VR referral which then will be given to school staff so that the VR counselor can receive educational records, psychological records, and if a release is given to a medical professional, medical documentation of the student's disability. If the student has an IEP or is on a 504 plan, while both of those documents are very important in helping the VR counselor to learn more about the student, we are not able to use those documents to determine eligibility. So if you refer yourself to VR, please be sure to notify your school case manager. This will help to ensure that your VR counselor will be invited to participate on your transition team. So if you'd like more information about New Hampshire Vocational Rehabilitation and the services that we provide, please contact the State Transition Coordinator, Tina Greco. The information by phone is area code 603-271-3993 or email at tina.greco at doe.nh.gov. The mailing address is 21 South Fruit Street, Suite 20 in Concord, New Hampshire, 03301.